Well, I have, uh, I'm very excited to see you guys and, and I have a couple of announcements for you. So first of all, uh, we, have, we have two special guests coming to visit us this week. Tomorrow, we are going to have Jana come and do a lesson for us. I remember, guys, our very first lesson was about the golden rule. Do you guys remember that? Yeah? Do you remember our very first lesson about the golden rule? Well, uh, tomorrow, we're going to have Jana. She's a singer and a guitarist and a teacher. And she's going to come and do a, help us do a lesson about the golden rule, like the second part of it. Okay, she has very interesting things to tell you guys. So I'm excited about that. And then on Friday, we are going to have Juliana's mom come and, and help us with a lesson. Are you guys excited about that? Yeah. It's going to be pretty cool. Wait, hi. hey, why is that chicken man still with chicken box? I don't, I don't know. I, don't know what's going I on. might not come tomorrow because I have Russian. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have it. We'll we'll have we'll put it on YouTube so you can watch it later. But we'll miss you. Okay, guys. Let's start today. Hey, hey chicken man, just open yourself up. <laughs> open yourself up. Chicken, chicken man and woman doesn't want to be seen. Okay, guys. We're gonna start today's lesson, and today we're gonna talk about instruments. Today we're gonna talk about instruments. Very good. And this was actually Dove's idea, which I'm I'm very proud of him for coming up with some of our ideas for the Green Schoolhouse. We're gonna talk about instruments. Before we show instruments, before we show, I'm gonna ask the kids individually. Let's come over here. So. Lisa and Timothy. Uh, could I draw my favorite instrument very quick? <clears throat> um, sure. Just be careful. Don't spill anything over there, okay? So Lisa and Timothy, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me, uh, give me an example of an instrument. A piano. A piano. Timothy. A what is it? A you drum. A drum, very good. And Remy, can you give me an example of an instrument? Let me un try to unmute Remy. Um, okay, give me an example of an instrument, Remy. Um, a violin. A violin, very good. And Alexa, can you give me an example of an instrument? Uh, a piano. A piano, okay. And Spencer, can you give me an example of an instrument? Can you give me an example of an instrument? Are you making a flute? <laughs> Death with your hands. Can you make? Can you give me an example of an instrument, Spencer? I guess not. Okay. And chicken pot pie and grapes, nine dollars. Can you give me an example of an instrument? A recorder. A recorder. Okay. I oh, like it. I think, it's <laughs> I think it is Juliana. I think we figured it out. So I, I, I think it's really interesting that all of you guys, when I asked you to give me an example of an instrument, you gave me examples of musical instruments, right? We had a drum. Timothy said a drum. Lisa said a piano. Alexa also said a piano. Um, Spencer made a flute. Uh, motion with his hands. Juliana said recorder. Uh, and Remy said, did you say violin? Yeah. Yeah, Remy said violin. So you guys all gave me examples of musical instruments, which I think is really cool uh, that that's where, that was your first idea, musical instruments. That's right. So what I want to talk about today is that obviously there are a lot of musical instruments, and that's the first thing that all of us think about but there are other kinds of instruments besides just musical instruments that other people use in their professions, in their jobs, right? So that's what I want to talk about today. So I see, it looks like Juliana has a bongo there. Is that a bongo, Juliana? 
Well, it's like a it's like a type of drum. You see? You guys can you guys see Julian? All of us. We don't hear you. You guys can make the the table into your instrument. Oh. There you go. Now you have a drum. Right? Okay, very good. So those are musical instruments. What I want to ask you guys about is if I give you an example of a, of a profession, of a job that somebody does, can you tell me the kind of instruments that that person might use in their job? Now remember, when you're a musician, when you're making music, instruments help you make music. A drum helps you make a beat, a uh, violin helps you play a melody, right? Even your voice could be an instrument when you're a musician, right? But what, what about other jobs? If I ask you guys about a different job, can you tell me about what kind of instrument that person might use, okay? Let's, let's try it and see. So let me give you the first, the first example. The first example will be, um, a, and I'm going to ask each of you, a firefighter. What kind of instrument might a firefighter use? Remy. Mm. Yeah. A fire hydrant. A fire hydrant. Very good. A fire hydrant. That, or Dove says, or a fire hose. Very good. What other kind of instruments might a firefighter use? <clears throat> Raise your hand if you think you know. Lisa, what kind of instrument might a firefighter use? I think you have to unmute yourself, Lisa. Unmute yourself. Good. Unmute. Unmute. Okay, good. So what kind of instrument? What kind of what kind of instrument might a firefighter use, Lisa? Um, be you, be you. A siren, very good. A siren to let people know to get out of the way. Timothy, what other kind of instrument might a firefighter use? Uh, a hose. A hose, very good. Alexa, what kind of instrument might a firefighter use? What kind of instrument might a firefighter use, Alexa? Um, a truck. A truck? A fire truck. A fire truck, very good. That's definitely an instrument. What about, uh, Spencer, are you there? Are you nearby? Unclear. Okay, Juliana, what about you? What kind of instrument might a firefighter use? Let's say somebody is, uh, there's a fire and somebody is stuck in a tall building at the very top. What kind of instrument might a firefighter use to help that person? A ladder. A ladder. A, a ladder. Very good. The firefighter might use a ladder, right? Let's take a look here at our firefighters. Can you guys see my firefighters here? You see, here's a firefighter using a hose, right? And that hose is connected to a fire hydrant. Who said fire hydrant? I think, uh, was it Remy? Yeah? The, the hose is connected to the fire hydrant. That's the source of the water. 
And then over here, we can see a firefighter that's using a ladder, right? Walking to a ladder to help somebody out uh, who needs help in a tall part of a building that's on fire. But looking at these pictures, what other kind of instruments can you see the firefighters using? Raise your hand if you want to. Helmets. Helmets, very good. That's an important instrument. Why do firefighters need helmets? They, so they don't burn their face? Yeah, they have special, special masks and helmets so they don't burn their face. Yes, Lisa. Boots. Special boots, exactly, so they can walk uh, on, the, um, on the burnt, like if something is burnt or there's sharp or hot objects on the floor, they can walk and not burn their feet. Yes, Juliana. Um, and Oops. also, on, they have special costumes. Yes, Juliana, hang on, Dolph, yes. They have air tanks to breathe when there's smoke. Very good, Juliana. They have special oxygen tanks on their back. You see this firefighter has a yellow oxygen tank because when a firefighter goes inside of a burning building and there's smoke, that smoke is very dangerous. If you breathe in too much of that smoke, um, it's very, very bad for you and you can get very sick or even die. So firefighters have a special tank. They also have a special costume. Mm -hmm, like a special, a special coat, a special uniform that's... Um, resists uh, fire, right, and helps keep them cool and helps them uh, from burning, prevents them from burning. So you see just this one profession, the firefighter has a tremendous amount of instruments or tools that they use to help them do their job, okay? Now let me ask you guys about a different uh, profession and the instruments that they use. What about, what about a mechanic? What kind of instruments might a mechanic use? A hammer. A hammer, very good. What else? Somebody that fixes your car. What kind of instruments might they use? Uh, yeah. No? They might use a, let's take a look here. Somebody that's fixing your car, they might use a wrench right, to turn, see a wrench right here, to uh, turn some uh, bolts or some screws in, the, um, in your car, right? They might use gloves so that their hands don't get covered in oil and grease. They might use special gauges, like this one here, this measures how much oil is in your car and whether your oil needs to be changed, right? They might also use a, a car mechanic might also use special, um, like a special jack or a special lift that lifts up the car so that the mechanic can work underneath the car, right? So there are a lot of instruments that a mechanic can use as well. What about, what about a, a doctor? What kind of instruments might a doctor use? Anybody have ideas? Um. Very good. Uh, a stethoscope to listen to the heart. Yes, Juliana. Yeah, uh, very good. A doctor might use a syringe to give you a shot. What other instruments might a doctor use? What's that little... Th yes, Remy. Um, a telescope. Um, the thing that they do to your heart to see if it's beating. Yeah, it's, it's called the stethoscope, that's right. There's another type of scope that a doctor uses. They use it to look inside your nose and inside your ears and inside your eyes, right? They shine a little light. <clears throat> you guys know what I'm talking about? No. No, it looks like this. See this little girl here? Yeah. See the doctor looking inside her ear with this instrument? You see that? Yeah. Right there? That's called an otoscope, yeah? And it's something that the doctor shines a light and it has a special lens that magnifies, that makes bigger whatever the doctor is looking at so it can see inside the small openings in your head, right? Very good. What other, what other tools might a doctor use? What does a doctor use to check your temperature? A thermometer, right? 
Papa, Papa, mm. what if, um, um, Lisa's brother doesn't understand. Lisa's brother, Lisa's, it's not her brother, it's her friend, Timothy. Yeah, no, no, it's not, it's not my brother. It's yeah, he's your friend, right? He's not your brother. Yes, he's your brother. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Timothy, do you understand what I'm saying in English, or do you want me to do some Russian for you to translate? I can't hear you. I just don't want to hear anything because everyone talks. That's okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. What about now? Yes. Great. Okay. Let's continue. I don't hear you. You don't hear me? I hear you. You don't hear me? I don't. How about now? Can you hear me? No. Yes? No. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Great. Okay. So what about, so we talked about doctors and mechanics and firefighters. What about a photographer? What kind of instruments might a photographer use? A camera. Camera. I am a photographer. In fact, I have a camera right over here. It looks like this. Right, that's my camera that I use for, for my work. Camera, what else, what other kind of instruments might a photographer use? Phones. What, what is it, Lisa? Phones. Phones, a photographer can use phones, of course, because they take pictures. What other instruments can a photographer use? Computers. Computers, very good, to edit the pictures. Photographers also use... Yes, and photographers also use uh, this over here. Do you guys know what this is called? Can you guys see my screen? What's, what's this called over here? Anybody know what this is? A stand. A stand or a tripod, right? This is a tripod. What does it do? Why do photographers use this? To hold their phone. So, to hold their phone or to hold their camera to keep it stable, right? A tripod, very good. And what about this over here? What's this? A TV. No, that's not a TV. That's a light. That's a light box, right? Photographers use light to take pictures. So sometimes you have light already, but sometimes you need to create light. And when you need to create light, you use this uh, different types of lights. This is called, this is a light and it's got a soft box on top of it to make the light softer. So that's another instrument photographers use. Yes, Alexa. What can my name? Mm, yes, you're doing some very creative things with your name. Very good. And you guys are all students, right? You guys all uh, go to school or you used to go to school before the coronavirus and now you go to school online. What kind of instruments do students use? What kind of instruments do you use in school? Uh, pencils. Pens, pencils. Yes, Remy. Erasers. Erasers. Yes, Remy. Um, a notebook. A notebook. Very good. What else? Timothy, what kind of instruments do you use at school? Какие какие вещи ты используешь? Какие инструменты ты используешь в школе? чтобы делать уроки, чтобы рисовать. Okay, we'll come back to you. It's okay. It's his first day, so no worries. We'll, we'll keep rolling. Uh, very good. So here's a picture. You guys want to see a picture of Dove with his instruments at school? Here's a picture of Dove on his first day of school last year. That's Dove and me and my wife Mila, Dove's oh! mom. Hey, hey, my, my hair is blue. Last His time. hair was blue. And look how many colored pencils he's got. Can you guys count how many colored pencils that is? Probably. Probably a year. Yeah, probably like a million colored pencils. Infinity colored pencils. And like you guys said, here's a student. He is writing with a pen in his notebook. He's got a textbook. Oh, could you show another He's thing how I'm writing? Mm, this is all I have. 
Hey, how about the three, three book? Oh, I don't have that in front of me right now. Sorry. Huh? I don't have that. I don't have mine yet. Three, 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 three. Uh, I don't have that here. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll, we'll show it next time. Okay, very good. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. So those are the, the instruments that a student uses. Pens, paper, notebooks, a desk to write on, um, all kinds of uh, tools to help us learn, right? We did learn about dinosaurs, yeah. So if, um, who knows what a writer is? A writer or an author? Yes, Remy. An author is someone who writes books and who like writes in a book and then there's another person who does the pictures. Very good. Uh, oh, an author is a person that writes a book and the person that does pictures. Yeah, the I want to, I want to have, I want to invite Dove over here. Dove, can you help me? I want to show you guys some more instruments. We're going to show it to you and you tell me if you know what it means, what it is. Okay. So come show them this instrument. Ladybug is missing. <laughs> That's right. Who knows? Who knows what uh, this instrument is right here? The dove is holding scissors. No, these are not scissors. What are these? They start with a P. Pliers. They're pliers. Very good. What do we use pliers for? Pliers. To what? To cut stuff. No, not, well, you can cut stuff with them. They have a little sharp piece here, but what else can you do? If you have to pull a crocodile's tooth, what do you do? Use pliers. Grab it with pliers and you pull, right? Hey, Dad, could you try to do it? Yeah, let me pull, should we pull out Dove's tooth right now? No, just pretend. No, no, let's do it for real. Which tooth do you want to pull out? Mm. Guys, can you, Dove, open your mouth so they can see. Open your mouth big. So I'm back. Open your mouth so you can show which only for ten. Which tooth should we pull out for Dove? Only for ten. Alexa, back Alexa, so we can see you. Alexa, help us decide which of Dove's teeth we should pull out first. This one. This front one here, the big one. Dove, open your mouth big so we can hear. Yeah. Open your mouth. <laughs> open your mouth. It's not gonna hurt. I promise. <laughs> it won't hurt. Open it. Open your mouth. <laughs> When you take out oh, open your mouth, Dove. <laughs> oh. Guys, I think he's I think he's scared. Can you tell him about the tooth fairy? Tell him about the tooth fairy. For every tooth I pull out right now, the tooth fairy is gonna give him what, like two dollars? She's gonna give it. She might even give you a two dollar bill. Yeah, you might get a you might get a two dollar bill. Uh, how many? Uh, who lost a tooth? Uh, Timothy, have you lost any teeth yet? I can't. Hi, Dad. No, Lisa, have you lost any teeth? No. You lost two teeth. Uh, what? Uh, unmute yourself, Lisa. You go. How many teeth have you lost? I lost two teeth. You did. How much money did you get from the tooth fairy? Um. Know, I Alexa. No, I got. I got a hundred. Thousand. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand sounds pretty good. Alexa. Um, I got one loose. Um, one, I already got um one tooth that fell out, and then and I got a grown one after that one, and then I got another shaking one, and the new tooth that's growing up is as big as the adult tooth, and. The second tooth didn't fall out yet. Wow, you got a lot going on in your mouth. <sighs> so, uh, so Dove can make quite a bit of money right now if I pull some teeth out, right? Okay, come on, Dove, let's do it. Open your mouth, open wide, open big. Guys, it, it's, it's not gonna hurt, I promise. It eh? will not it hurt. hurt. Open your mouth, open big. Eh, open, ah, uh, open, ah, uh, do it. Make him do it, do this. Yeah, I have to force it open. <laughs> 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 He's too scared. Yes. Sasha, just do it. Okay, all right, I'm going to do it. Ready? Open big, Dove. One, two, three. 
didn't go out. <laughs> show, not... show us his tooth. All right, all right. We didn't actually pull out his tooth. It's okay. Oh, now we'll do it. Now that he's got his mouth <laughs> open big again, Dope. Open wide. <laughs> open wide so I can get my instrument <laughs> in your mouth and pull out. Every single time he opens his mouth, you can just shove it in his mouth and pull out his tooth. Open your mouth so I can put this instrument inside there and pull out your tooth. Here we go. There we go. I can even, you know, his teeth are pretty small. I could probably pull out two teeth at the same time. Let's do it. Ready? Open. Open big. One, two, and ready? Close your eyes. It's not going to hurt, I promise. Ready, set, and go. You didn't pull out his tooth. it out. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Those are called... Those are called pliers. What is this called? A hammer. What do, what do we what do we use this for? The hammer and nails. The hammer and nails. What else do we use it for? To take our nails in the house. We we hammer nails. Which part do we hammer the nails with? This part or this part? That part. This part? What does this part do? This part takes nails out, right? We slide it underneath the nail so that the head of the nail is on top and then we pull the nail out right that's a hammer what about this who knows what this a is screwdriver. a screwdriver very good but what kind of screwdriver is it can you see a one that you are, that drives Around the world. It's one that drives screws. You see the head of the screwdriver? It's a, this is called a Phillips screwdriver because it has kind of like a little, like a little cross there, like a little X on the head, right? The other type of screwdriver is called the flathead screwdriver. So it's for different screws. So it's a screwdriver. What about this? This is one of my favorite instruments. You guys know what this is? No, it's not a ruler. I mean, it does the same thing, but it's called something else. Who knows what this is called? A measuring. A measuring tape or a tape measure, right? Because it sits inside this thing and then you can pull it out. Let's measure some of Dove's stuff. Come here, Dove. Let's measure some of your stuff. Yeah, come here. Let me, let me measure some of your things. Sit down over here. I'm not going to pull out any more of your teeth. But let's measure. What do you want to measure? Should we measure your fingers? Let's measure Dove's index finger. Dove's index finger looks like it's about two and a half inches long. Um, how about this one? The middle, the middle finger? Yes, let's measure Dove's middle finger. Let's put Dove is pointing it. Yeah, how many, how, it's about two and a half inches, a little longer, right? Dove's middle finger. What about, uh, what about Dove's, um, Nose. Let's measure Dove's nose. It's also about two inches. Mm -hmm. What about his head? Like all the way across. It's about six inches across. Yeah, six inches in diameter. What about my tie? Let's measure my tie. My tie is um, how long? Can we measure my tie here? Ugh. I should get a tie that looks like a tape measure. Uh, it's about 17 inches or so. About 17 inches long. Okay. And what else should we what else should we measure? Five inches. What should what else should we measure? We should measure your head. My head. This way? Measure your body. Yeah. Should we measure it this way? Yeah. So from top of my head to my chin. About 11 and a half inches. Or How so. about mine? Oh, it's 30 and a half inches. Seven, and a, seven inches for Dove. Dove's head is about seven inches tall. Hey, no, no, that's not, that's not right. Yours is too. Okay. Um, and do it on his hand over here, his elbow here. Sasha. Sasha. Yeah. Sasha. Do it over here. Do measure what? Measure over here. The, the forearm? No, can you? Um, oh, I have it over here. My forearm. Okay, so my forearm is 
about from wrist to elbow, it's about 12 and a half inches. Okay. It's really funny, guys. If you have a tape measure at home, you can measure all kinds of stuff. You can measure your cat. If you have a cat and a tape measure, you can measure your cat. You can measure your foot. You can measure a hot dog. If you have a hot dog in your refrigerator, you can measure that. If you have um, if you have a like stuff in your room, like you can measure the distance between your bed and your bathroom, for example. You can measure the distance between your TV and your couch. All kinds of things you can do. Okay. This is, this is, Dove, can you bring that over here? That's a really cool instrument. I don't think they know what this is. Can you bring it over here? Bring it over here. They don't know what it is. Can you bring it so you can show them? This instrument, who knows what this is? Phone? No, it's not a phone. Well, let's try. Hello? Hello? Nope, it's not Hi. a phone. Hi. Hi. Maybe, maybe it's a maybe it's a shaver. It's a shaving machine. Let's try that. What? No, 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 no. You have to press on this button. Uh -huh. okay. oh, let me shave your head. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're supposed to use that on the brain. Uh, maybe better if you just. Uh, no, I don't think that's a shaver. Maybe it's a. Um, what else could it be? Cut dresser. A cut dresser? Don't press it when it's next to your body. I don't know what it does. This is this is called a stud finder. What does it do? What does it do is an excellent question. Inside your oh, hang on a second. When you when you're trying to um, attach something to a wall, your walls are made out of something called sheetrock, and it's a very it's a fairly thin, not a very sturdy material. So when you put like a big screw or a big nail so you can hang a heavy painting or something on a wall. Yeah. Um, it usually, the, the sheetrock in your wall is not a very good thing to hold that. What is a good thing to hold something heavy in your wall is a piece of wood. So inside your walls, behind the wall, in certain places, there are pieces of wood like hard pieces of wood and that's where you would want to put a screw to hold something heavy right so what this device does is it can actually it can look inside a wall and it can tell you where the hard piece is in the wall behind the sheetrock right that's what it does so it's called the stud finder stud is a big piece of wood that's hiding behind your wall so it can actually see behind walls and that's what Dove is doing now. When it sees something behind a wall, it beeps, okay? So that is an instrument that um, we use around the house, a stud finder. Okay, um, very good. That was great. Let's very quickly shift gears. And I'm going to go... What does shift gears mean? Ah, what does shift gears mean? Thank you for asking. It means to um, do something different to move to doing something different, right? Now you guys remember, I have a couple of like my favorite, favorite poems by Shel Silverstein. One is called Peanut Butter Sandwich and the other one is called Crocodile Dentist. You guys remember those poems or do you know them? No, 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 okay. no, no. I wanna, I, yeah, some of you might know them or some of you might remember them. I'm gonna read you those poems again, but this time when I read them, I want you to listen very carefully and see if you can notice in the poem where the poem talks about instruments, okay? So listen very carefully, and then after the poems, we're going to try to pull some more of Dove's teeth out, okay? Yeah. Leo, don't do it for that. Do it okay. For okay, we're going to start first with a peanut butter sandwich poem. And then we're gonna read the cro and then we'll we'll see if you guys noticed where uh, we're talking about instruments. In fact, when you hear me read something about instruments in the poem, I want you guys to give me a thumbs, give me a thumbs up or wave your wave your hand. All right. So I'm gonna mute everybody. I'm muting. Uh, uh, not yet. I'm gonna mute everybody. 
So here is our first poem about the peanut butter sandwich. Dov, you want to help me read it? Our first poem about the peanut butter sandwich. I'll sing you a poem of a silly young king who played with the world at the end of a string, but he only loved one single thing, and that was just his peanut butter sandwich. His scepter and his royal gowns, his regal throne and golden crowns were brown and sticky from the mounds and drippings from each peanut butter sandwich. His subjects were all silly fools, for he had passed the royal rule that all that they could learn in school was how to make a peanut butter sandwich. He would not eat his sovereign steak. He scorned his soup and kingly cake. He told his courtly cook to bake an extra sticky peanut butter sandwich. And then one day he took a bite and started chewing with delight, but found his mouth was stuck quite tight from that last bite of peanut butter sandwich. His brother pulled, his sister pried, the wizard pushed, his mother cried, my boy's committed suicide from eating his last peanut butter sandwich. The dentist came and the royal doc, the royal plumber banged and knocked, but still those jaws stay tightly locked. Oh darn, that sticky peanut butter sandwich. The carpenter, he tried with pliers. The telephone man tried with wire. Very good, Juliana. The firemen, they tried with fire, but couldn't melt oh, that peanut butter sandwich with ropes wow. and pulleys, drills and coil with steam and lubricating oil. For 20 years of tears and toil, they fought that awful peanut butter sandwich. Then all his royal subjects came. They hooked his jaws with grappling chains and pulled both ways with might and main against that stubborn peanut butter sandwich. Each man and woman, girl and boy, put down their plows and pots and toys and pulled until crack. Oh, joy. They broke right through that peanut butter sandwich. A puff of dust, a screech, a squeak. The king's jaw opened with a creak. And then in a voice so faint and weak, the first words that they heard him speak were, How about a peanut butter sandwich? Very good, guys. I heard, I saw that everybody was paying attention and you guys uh, noticed when we were talking about... Well, yeah, you were too when we were talking about instruments. Do you guys remember which instruments they tried to use to open the king's wires, mouth? Wires. wires. What else? Chains. 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 What else? The the carpenter he tried with. With pliers, right? The fireman tried with pliers. Yeah. What, what, we will, but first we're going to, so you, you guys did a great job. Now we're going to read another poem about uh, a crocodile dentist, or crocodile's toothache, rather, it's called. The crocodile had uh, pain in his teeth, and so the crocodile, the dentist, the dentist worked on him, okay? So I'm going to read you that poem. Lisa, you have the Russian version of this book, right? With the dentist that's inside the crocodile's mouth? Yes. You can, you can show us that picture later if you want. Okay. The crocodile's toothache. Again, give me a thumbs up when you hear, uh, if you hear about uh, um, instruments. The crocodile went to the dentist and sat down in the chair. And the dentist said, now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, I'll tell you the truth. I have a terrible ache in my tooth. And he opened his jaws so wide, so wide, that the dentist, he climbed right inside. And the dentist laughed. Oh, isn't this fun? As he pulled out the teeth one by one. And the crocodile cried, you're hurting me so. 
Please put down your pliers and let me go. Good, Juliana. But the dentist just laughed with a ho, ho, ho. And he said, I still have 12 to go. Oops, that's the wrong one, I confess. But what's one crocodile's tooth, more or less? Good, Remy. What's, uh, then suddenly the jaws went snap. And the dentist was gone right off the map. And where he went, one could only guess, to the north or south or east or west, he left no forwarding address. What's one dentist, more or less? Right? Here's our dentist inside the crocodile's mouth with pliers pulling out his tooth, right? Very good. Okay, Dove, come on, let's pull some out. Oh, I'm not going to come on, Dove. Dove. Your, my pliers are ready and your friends are waiting, Dove. Lisa, you want to show us that picture? I love her. Everybody look at Lisa's uh, screen. Do you see she has a, a, a version of this book in Russian? Oh, and you see, me, the, me too. And you see the, de the dentist inside the crocodile's mouth right there pulling his teeth out with pliers one by one? Very good. Thank you for sharing that, Lisa. Very good. Uh, very good. Okay, uh, Dove, come on, let's quickly pull some teeth because we have one more thing to do. Come on. Oh, Hurry, Dove, come on. We have, to, we have to pull out your teeth and then we have to clean up all the blood afterwards. Come on. It's going to take me a long time to clean up the blood. Come on, come on, hurry. We got we got things to do. Come on, Dove. Let's pull some teeth. Okay, which tooth do you want to lose? Which tooth do you not need anymore? Which one? Open your mouth. Open. Not tough one. Open. Open big. Open not wide. Ah, uh, ah, uh, open uh. wide. But get closer to the camera here so they can see me pulling. Get closer. Get in there. There we go. Open your, open your mouth big. Open big. Open big. Open. <laughs> open big. Ah, uh, open. Come on. Do it. Open. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it. Okay. All right, guys, we have one more thing to do, and then maybe we'll try to have a dog. Do you have any wiggly teeth? I don't think he does, but can you give me, um, can you give me a pencil or a pen, please? I thought I had one here, but I lost it. I know a person that's seven, and they haven't even lost their tooth, and they don't even have wiggly teeth. Okay. I know a person that's seven, yes. and they yep. lost a lot of teeth. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. That's perfect. Um, um, Alexa, you have your hand up. What's up? Alexa? Alexa? Alexa, you should change your name. Ladybug is misspelled. That's true. Uh, Lisa, what's up? Uh, I can't hear you. I need the Y, not an E. Uh, she's not saying anything. Alexa, do you want to say something? No? Okay, great. We're going to move on to our next activity, you guys. Do you remember that uh, we were talking about different professions and the tools they use? Well, what tools does a writer use? Somebody that writes or an author, like Remy was saying, uh, uses a computer or uses a pen and paper, right? But they also use one other really important... Okay. A printer. a printer, but they also use one other really important thing, which is what? They couldn't write a book, they couldn't write a story without what? Script. Without script, without words, right? A, a writer or an author needs to have words that they can use in order to create a story or create a book. So what I want to do with you guys together now is use our instruments of a pen and paper uh, and use our words to see if we can write a story together, okay? Some of you might have done this before, but the way this story works is that um, you are going to, I'm gonna ask you for some words and you're gonna have to remember our lesson about parts of speech. You guys remember noun boy and adjective and verb girl and the adverbinatrix? You remember those characters? Yes. Sure. So you're gonna help me. So come on over here, Dove. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna say, um, and you're, tell me what 
to do and you're gonna write it. Okay, but let's do, let's give all the kids a chance to contribute more. Okay, okay, but can I, can I, can I like do it first so they know what to do? Sure, so you guys have a choice, okay? We can write a story about a vacation or we can write a story about pizza or we can write a story about what happens when you Oh, very cool. Oh, isn't that a, a vampire or Dracula? Very good. Uh, so do you guys want to do a story about vacation or pizza or what happens when a unicorn poops? Um, I want to do what happens when the unicorn poops. What happens when a unicorn poops? Okay. okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get... I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm just so trying gonna, to make it funny for the we're, kids. We're going to... We're going to... Can we have the kids contribute as well? Uh, some words? Yeah, everybody how, about, how about everybody does it at the same time? Yeah. Me and everybody. Everybody has a chance. Okay, great. So you guys ready? I'm going to ask you individually. So Lisa no, I and Tim... No, I'm going to go first. Uh, so I pronounce it. Okay, okay. So Dove, can you give me an adjective, please? Do you guys remember what an adjective is? Who remembers what an adjective is? Raise your hand. It's Remy, do you remember? An adjective or... Yeah. Noun. Exactly, something ah. that is, something that describes a noun. So, like, if uh, huh. a noun is a person, place, or thing, then if our noun, for example, is tea, then hot would be our adjective, or cold could be our adjective, right? What else? Uh, somebody give me another adjective, Lisa. No, Baba, I already gave you. Which one? Let me hear. Hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. Bye, Alexa. Uh, okay, our adjective is hot. For Dove is going to use the adjective hot. Okay, Juliana, can you give me? Those are Dove's muscles, everybody. In case you're wondering what's happening. Okay, uh, Juliana, can I have another adjective, please? Can you give me another adjective, Juliana? A green cabbage. Uh, just the just the adjective. So green. Yeah. Okay, green. And Lisa, can you give me a color, please? Um, I can't hear you, Lisa. I think she said pink. I don't know. I can't hear her. Lisa, can you speak up louder, please? I think she said pink. Can you unmute yourself and remute yourself? Papa. But this is not how it works. That's exactly how it works. So she said pink. Okay, we're going to go. Did you say pink, Lisa? Yes? Okay, pink. Okay, pink. Oh, I got it right. And uh, Remy, are you there? Remy, can I have another adjective, please? Headphones. Uh, headphones is a noun. It's a thing. Can I have an adjective, something that describes a noun? Um, like um, if a Papa, if cat is a noun. Papa, after this one, could I only try and show I think them? we have to give all the kids an opportunity to contribute. Okay, okay, but can I do it first? Yes. So, Remy, give me another adjective. So, like an adjective could be... Um, like if you were talking about a person, a person could be nice, a person could be mean, a person could be fast, they could be slow, things that describe something. Can you give me another adjective, Remy? Okay, um, selfish. Se Ooh, that is a really nice adjective, selfish. What does selfish mean, Dove? No, Papa! I am doing it by the lines. I'm just leaving myself a little extra space. Trust me. Self. Very good. What does selfish mean, Dove? Dove? You're not doing it. I'm just writing it up here so we could do it more than once, potentially. So I leave a little bit of room. Do you understand? Because in the morning I had to erase it. So, so I don't have to erase my pen here. I'm just writing it a little bit above so there's room to do it again if we want to do it again. Does it make sense? Okay. What does selfish mean, Dove? What does selfish mean? Selfish means somebody that only thinks about themselves, right? Doesn't think about other people. Okay. Lisa, can I have a noun, please? 
What's a noun? A noun is a person, place, or a thing. Could you give me a word that's a person, place, or a thing? I'm having a hard time with Lisa's audio. At least I can't hear you at all, sweetie. Um, okay, I'll come back to you. Juliana, can you give me a noun, please? Whole foods. Whole foods? Whole foods. Whole foods. That's a store, right? And can I have an adjective from Remy? Um, Something that describes a noun, a describing word. Slow. Slow. Very good. Slow. Lisa, do we have your audio figured out yet? Not yet. Um, you might go to um, go to the preferences and try to restart that. If you go to up up to the preferences, this happens with me too. Go to preferences and where it says microphone, just um, change your selection a couple times and see if that works. That seems to work for me. Okay, uh, Juliana, can I have a verb, please, an action word? Hi. Juliana, can you give me an action word? Running. Running, okay. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna say run. Dove, can you give me a plural Hi. noun, please? Dove, can you give me a plural noun, please? Coronaviruses. 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 And um, Remy, can you give me a verb, an action word? Um, Something stapler? You, uh, no, stapler is a noun, it's a thing. Can you give me a, a verb as a word, something you do? Like you run, you bake, uh, you uh, smile. Um, read. Read. Okay. And Dove, can you give me a noun, please? Aquarium. Aquarium. And Juliana, can you give me an adjective, please? Can you give me an adjective, Juliana? Lisa, can we hear you now? Black. Black? Did you say black, Juliana? Yes. Okay. Black. Um, and Dove, can you give me a plural noun, please? Plural means what, Juliana and Remy? Onion. What does it mean, Juliana? What does plural mean? It means like it has an S at the end. Yeah, it has an S at the end because it's more than one, right? So if onion is a noun, then onions would be a plural noun. So Dove said onions. Okay. Why don't you say plural noun to me, Remy? I'm about to. There's lots more. Um, so Remy, can I have a plural noun that's an animal? Uh -huh. Hi, welcome uh -huh. back, Lisa. Um, Plural noun that's oh, animals. A whale and a shark. Um, not two different animals, but pick one of those and then we'll have an S at the end. So either whales or sharks. Shark. Whales. Shark. Hang on, Lisa. I'm going to come to you next. Okay, so sharks. Sharks. Lisa, can I have another plural? Uh, no, yeah, another plural noun, Lisa. So more than one of something or some person or some place. Fishes. 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 Okay. So we have that. We have that. Um, Lisa, can I have another plural noun, please? Uh, a turtle. It doesn't have to be animals. It could be anything. It can't I said turtle. Turtles. Okay. Turtles. Perfect. Turtles. Right. And um, uh, Juliana, can I have a verb, please? An action word? Dog. 
Just jump. Jump. Perfect. Jump. Okay. Okay. We're ready to read the story about what happens when a unicorn poops. You guys ready to read this? Okay. So this is a story that's using the words you guys gave me. Okay. So unicorns aren't like other onions. They're hot. They look like sharks, but with fishes on their feet and a black mane of hair. But unicorns are pink and have a green aquarium on their heads. <laughs> Some turtles don't believe unicorns are selfish, but I believe in them. I would love to read a unicorn to far away coronavirus. One thing I've always jumped about is whether unicorns run rainbows or, <laughs> or, or are their whole foods slow like any other animals? Okay. So do you guys understand how this works? You guys give the words. We plug them in here into the story and then we read the story and it's funny because the word, because you don't know what the story is. So should we do another one? Yes. Great. Should we do it about, should we do it about vacation or about, uh, about pizza? Pizza. Pizza. Okay, pizza. All right, perfect. Um, Juliana, can I please have an adjective? She don't know. Juliana, can you give me an adjective? Sleeper. Sleeper. Hold on. What was it, Juliana? Say it loud. Red. Red. Okay. And um, Timothy, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you can you tell me a shape, Timothy? Can you tell me a shape? Triangle. Very good. Pizza. Triangle. And um, Timothy, can you also give me uh, food? Any food? Uh, it's chicken. Chicken. Okay. And Lisa, can you give me another food? Fish. And uh, Timothy, can you give me a number? Any number? Uh, 22. 22, okay. 22. 22, I got it. And uh, Remy, can I please have a noun? So a person, place, or a thing? Um, a grandma. A grandma. Very good. Grandma. And Remy, can I have an adjective, please? So something that describes a noun? Um, sleep. Uh, so sleep is a noun because it's a person, place, or thing. But if you wanted to describe somebody with the word sleep, it would be sleepy, right? Sleepy. Sleepy, somebody who's sleepy, so it describes them, sleepy. Um, Juliana, can I have an adjective, please? Slow. Dove, can I have an adjective, please? Adjective of cold. Cold. Um, Dove, can I have a noun, please? A noun? Um, balloon. 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 Um, uh, Timothy, can you tell me a person, any person? <clears throat> any person? Yeah, like the name of any person you know. Could be a real person, could be somebody from a movie, a book. Uh, it's Timothy. Timothy, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Timothy, excellent. And can I have, um, Remy, can I please have another noun? 
or some uh, other thing? Um, Masha. Masha, okay. That sounds like a person you know. And then... And cartoon. Oh, from a cartoon, right, Masha and the Bear. And Juliana, can you tell me a, um, a place in the world? <sighs> Like any country in the world? Africa. Africa. Perfect. Africa. And Dove, can I have a plural noun, please? A plural noun? Plural noun. Bottles. Bottles? Mm -hmm. Bottles. And Timothy, can I have another number, please? Uh, God, I show you my very hundred five. What is it? He's saying 105. 105. No, 105. 105? Yeah, just 105. Okay, great. I think it's we're not, ready. It's not, I, a difference, it's not a difference between 100 and 100. That's right. It's the same thing. It's just a different way of saying it. So uh, I think we're ready to read our story about pizza. Are you guys ready to read? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pizza was invented. What does it mean to invent something? Like make something. To, to make something, right? To come up with the idea for something. Pizza was invented by a red African chef named Timothy. <laughs> to make a pizza, you need to take a lump of balloon <clears throat> and make a thin, round, cold masha with it. <laughs> then you cover it with slow sauce, sleepy cheese, and freshly chopped bottles. Next, next you have to bake it in a very hot grandma. <laughs> when it's done, you have to cut it into 105 triangles. <laughs> some, some kids like chicken pizza the best, but my favorite is the fish pizza. <laughs> if I could, I would eat pizza 22 times every day. <laughs> yeah. All right, my friends, that was great. Let's do one last story, and this one is about vacations, okay? So this one has a little more words, so we'll try to get through it quickly. Can I, can I show Go. My okay, babe, before we, before we do that, Dova's going to show you his picture. And after we do that, and after we do that, we're going to try to pull some of Dova's teeth one more time. This is Dova's favorite instrument. Okay, so what it's is an it? electric guitar. You see, it smells this. That's cool. A guitar. It's an electric guitar. Very cool. Dove. Yeah, Dove drew that. Okay, nice, Dove. Thanks for sharing. Okay, you guys ready to write our, our story about vacations? Can I sit on yes, your lap? Come sit on my lap. I, I love it when you sit here with me. I really enjoy having you part of our, our show. Okay. After that, could you show your guitar? I can, absolutely. Okay. I have a, let me guess, is your favorite instrument a guitar? Um, yeah, I like the guitar. Okay. Um, oh, look, somebody's drawing. Oh, look, there's a picture that Remy drew. What is that, Remy? Whoa, it's a, that's so cool. I love it. What is it, Remy? It's a person looking at a turtle and a fish. <laughs> Pretty looks, straightforward. And that looks like a tree okay. or something. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of words we need for this story, guys, so let's, let's try to get through it. Dove, can I have an adjective, please? Adjective hot. Hot. Like Dove's favorite adjective, I think. Uh, Juliana, can I have an adjective, please? Oh, look at Juliana's pictures. Look, she's got a whole wall full of pictures. Look at that. That's nice. You guys see that? Look at all those pictures she made. Wow. It's like, um, what was the book we read? The Dot? Where Vashti made a whole gallery out of all the dots that she drew? That's what Juliana... Yeah, I read that one. That's a great book. Okay. Uh, Juliana, can I have an adjective, please? Fast. Fast. 
Um, uh, Lisa, can I have a noun, please? A person, place, or thing? Could be anything. Person, place, or thing? Place or thing. I have one. A place is my favorite is Tahoe. Tahoe? Perfect. And can you give me another noun, Lisa? Another uh, person, place, or thing? Um, who plays my thing is Timothy. Tim yeah. Timothy? <laughs> Timothy, that is a person, place, or thing. Um, uh, Remy, Remy, can I have a plural noun, please? Plural noun. Plural means more than one. Um, Yelena. Yelena. Well, let's uh, let's not use any people anymore because we used a lot of those. Okay. Let's try um, something else, like maybe some thing, but like uh, more than one thing. Just tell me anything, anything in the world. Okay. Um, places. Places. Okay, places. Places. That is a plural noun. Uh, Dove, can I have another plural noun, please? Another plural noun? Uh, evil bads. Evil bads. Very good. <laughs> evil bad. Hey, Papa, bad. Could a puppet Papa and evil bad be with us? Sure. Um, could you? Could, okay. There's... Puppet Papa can read the story uh, when it's done. Um, or Puppet Papa can ask people for nouns or, or things. Uh, um, Juliana, are you there? Or actually, may, Timothy, this is a good one for you. Uh, give me a game. Tell me a game. Any game. You can say it in Russian. Any game. Any game, like... Uh, a sports game or a board game, a card game. What's that? Football. What is it, Timothy? He said football. Football, perfect. Perfect. Perfect, football. Um, Juliana, can I have a verb, please, that ends in ing? So, like running or baking or flying. Breathing. Breathing. Dove, stop that. Stop though. I, because I asked you to stop because it's hitting the microphone. Breathing. Can I have another verb ending in ing, Remy? Oops. So an action, an action word that ends in ing. Um but I do want banking. Banking. Baking. Banking. 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 Like um, working at a bank. Mm -hmm. Banking. Banking. Uh, Dove, can I have a plural noun, please? Plural noun. Yeah, plural noun. Um, apples. Apples. And, Wait, yes. And, Juliana, can I have another verb ending in ing? So something you're doing? Spinning. Spinning? Spinning. Tanning? Tanning and... Pinning. pinning, pinning. Okay, hang on. The, uh, there's no room. There's no room. <laughs> pinning. Okay. Dove, can I have a noun, please? Puppet Papa. What, can I have a noun? Puppet Papa. Puppet Papa. Can I, can you move the dolls because I can't see the um the the paper. You not dolls. Yeah, puppet. Puppet Papa. And Juliana, can I have a, a plant? Any plant? Sunflower, sunflower doot. Who said that? Was that Remy? Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with sunflower. And Juliana, can I have a part of um can I have a plural noun, Juliana? Chicken pie and grapes, nine dollars. 
Juliana, can I have a plural noun? Chickens. Things? Chickens. Chickens. Perfect. Chickens. Well, Bob, Bob, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bob, Bob, could you talk and he talk? Or I'm gonna, he... He's going to talk when he reads the story. Um, Timothy, can I have another number, please? Uh, 200. 200. Can you move Puppy Pop? I can't see. 200. And can I have, Timothy, a, a part of the body, please? What? A part of your body. I still it's my butt. Butt? <laughs> hey. <laughs> but it is. It's your story. <laughs> we already talked about unicorns pooping, so I guess we we can't turn back now. Okay. Um, can I have, uh, Remy, can I have a place, please? Any place? Hawaii. What is it? Hawaii. Hawaii or Kauai? Kauai. Kauai. Okay. Kauai. Kauai. It's an island next to Hawaii. And can I have, um, Lisa, can I have an adjective, please? A word that describes something? I don't know what that means. It's a word that describes something. So if you wanted to describe a cat, you might say the cat is nice or the cat is fluffy. Okay, okay, I know it. Okay. Uh, a butterfly is nice. It's the word that describes the butterfly. So if you nice? think if you think of a butterfly, what what's the butterfly like? Gentle. Fine. What is it? Flying. Flying is a verb, but we can use we can use flying uh, because we need that too. So we're going to use flying. Flying is an action word that ends in ing. Flying. And how about Lisa? An adjective, something that describes, something that describes Timothy. What's Timothy like? Uh, music. What? No, not what does he like. What is he like? Is he nice? Is he tall? Is he fast? Is he funny? Is he, is he, he is smelly? Funny. He's funny. Okay. <laughs> funny. <laughs> funny. <laughs> Okay, I think we did it. All right, Puppet Pop is going to read the story. Give me Puppet Papa. Puppet Papa's back. Yeah. Puppet Papa, Yo. why weren't you here for, for one week? Uh, you know, I had things to do. I was doing stuff. I'm, I'm a busy guy. Well, what were you doing? I was uh, building. I was on vacation. Oh, vacation. Mm -hmm. Wait, where were you? I was in space i was on vacation in space i went to mars and to saturn and then i what? stopped by like on an asteroid and then i came back oh uh, what was your favorite planet oh mars was definitely my favorite planet why because it's so red and it's really cool and there are big storms and at night it's super super cold there That's definitely Evil Bad's favorite planet. You think Evil Bad's favorite planet is Mars? I think. Let's ask him. Puppet Pop Oil. Hey, Evil Bad, what's up? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, me too. Evil Bad, um, what's your favorite planet? Oh, my favorite planet is Mercury and Mars. Why is that? Because. Just and, because. and. Venus. And Venus. Uh, but why? Uh, because they're all bad. Because they're all bad. Because they're all bad planets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they're all bad and annoying. <laughs> Those are my favorite colors. Ah! <laughs> all right. Thanks, Evil Bad. Evil Bad, can I read the kids the story about vacations, though? Of course. Thanks, Evil Bad. All right. Let's read the story that we made together about vacations. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, e, uh, e, ooh. Okay. So our story about vacations. A vacation is when you take a trip to some hot place with your fast family. <laughs> Usually you go to some place that is near a Tahoe. 
or up on a Timothy. <laughs> a good vacation place is one where you can ride evil baths or play football or go hunting for places. I like to spend my time breathing or banking. When parents go on a vacation, they spend their time eating apples three times a day. Fathers play golf and mothers sit around pinning. Last summer, my little brother fell in a puppet papa and got poison sunflowers all over his butt. <laughs> my family is going to go to Kauai and I will practice flying. <laughs> parents need vacations more than kids because parents are always very funny. And because they have to work 200 hours every day, they have to work all year to make enough chickens to pay for the vacation. <laughs> yes, Juliana. Hours in one day. There are not 200 hours in one day, but it doesn't matter How do I do more? because these stories are silly, right? Do I do more? We're going to, we're going to go now, but, um, we will definitely do more of these on, on our lessons. And remember tomorrow we have, can I read you one of my stories? Yes, please. Okay. Juliana is going to read us one of her stories. Let's all, let's all listen attentively. Okay? Hang on, I'm going to mute everybody except for Juliana, okay? All right, Juliana, go ahead. Read us the story. Oh, us. The gray squirrel and the black squirrel. Once upon a time, a gray squirrel and a black squirrel were fighting in my backyard. It was cool. I was surprised that... I saw the them in the morning. They were fighting over a nut. The nut was the the size of a baseball, and they would wouldn't share the. Not cold. The kid called the police. The parents said, "Oh no!" And they made them get in trouble. Chapter two. The parents forgive them. The pa the parents forgive the kids. They learned a lesson not to touch the phone. They were happy the kids went back to the stuff they were doing and they got along. It was good. Their parents were happy. Chapter 3. They slept a long, they slept long, the, they slept till 10. They had breakfast at 12. They had lunch at 4 and their dinner at 8. Hours passed by. They loved, loved it so much. They skipped lunch and dinner. They were enjoying it. And 
they went to bed at at nine. The kids were very tired and they almost fell asleep without brushing or taking a shower. The end. Nice job, Juliana. Thank you for sharing that. You wrote that story all by yourself? Yeah. Did you actually see a black squirrel and a brown squirrel fighting in your backyard? I only saw a black squirrel and a, black, a, a gray squirrel, but they weren't fighting. I made up the rest. I see. So they, they gave you the inspiration to make up the story because you saw them. That's very cool. Thank you so much for sharing. I think we'll do more of that. We'll, we'll have you guys share your own stories. Okay, my friends, wonderful. Thank you very much. Today's lesson was super, super fun. And unfortunately, we didn't get to pull any of those teeth for real. But maybe we'll try again next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow with Jana, okay? We're going to do some really cool stuff tomorrow. Bye.